and Dante's Inferno. Yeah, I've gotten those. Yeah. But those are good. Those are good. Yeah. Well, I, like, I like the Inferno. Well, I like the Inferno. Dante's Peak is good too. Yeah. I did it in a rhyme one time. Lyrically speaking, Dante's Peaking. Like I was, <laughs> I was like, I'm a rapper and a poet, so I like, I've used those. Inferno and all that. Has the name done well for you in life? Also, it's been alright? Yeah, a lot of winter Texans like my name. So what? A lot of winter Texans like my name. Who? Winter Texans. Oh. Winter Texans? Yeah. They're old people. Yeah. What does old, that mean? Old white people. Old white people. <laughs> old, old Texans. Old white people. Winter Texans. White, white people. Ah. That's cool. Then they're probably going to like my name, too, because we got the same name. <laughs> All right, Dante, nice to meet you. Hi. Hi. I like two little bits. Okay. To be told. I'm trying. <laughs> okay, but I, was, I have a comment and a question. Go right ahead. I love doing biker boys. Thank you. I'm just saying. But I Do you bike. ride bikes? I would love to. <laughs> On the back of a bike, maybe? maybe? That's being sexist. You can ride your own bike. Okay, my question is, how do you feel about the relationship between Zuko and Azula? Um, some of my favorite scenes is between Zulo and, uh, Azula and Zuko. Uh, their relationship is crazy. First of all, I love Grey Delisle, the actress that voices Azula. Um, so I just love working with her. And then, secondly, like, that relationship is crazy, right? Crazy. She's freaking psycho. Um, <laughs> I love her though. I mean, I love her. Too. You gotta love her, even though she'll kill you. I mean, from yeah. Zuko, it's like, I love you, but like, I'm scared of you at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I love her, A, because she's crazy, B, she's badass. Like, she, I mean, she might beat Zuko in a fight, like, straight up. Like, it always seems like Zuko barely wins by the help of somebody else, you know? <laughs> so, I, I mean, I just love the relationship. I love more than anything, like, their banter. Like when they go back and forth and they talk, and I always—it doesn't matter if it's like I, like when I'm even reading the new comics that came out, I could just hear Gray's voice yelling at me. That's it's what crazy. happens with me when I read the Surge. I just heard her voice and your voice and all the bubbles. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Back. Yo, Swag is back. What's going on? How do you feel about fangirls? Uh. Fangirl, I think, my thing is like, we all fangirl over something, you know what I'm saying? Uh, if someone fangirls over something I've done, a character in my work, or, or me, I just kind of, I'm flattered, I appreciate it, but I think, it's one of those things like, we all fangirl over something. A friends of mine, like I go to conventions or something like that, and then people, I have friends who are like, yo man, it's so weird, like you go to these like comic conventions and people are dressed up, or fangirling over, you know, a cartoon. And I tell, I told one of my dudes, like, well, it's not as weird as you think it is. Like, let's put it this way. Like, football season comes up, we go to a sports bar, right? I'm like, you're, you're wearing a jersey of a team that you're not on. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what is that other than a costume, right? And we're in a bar with a bunch of people we don't know. What is that but a convention? And then when our team scores and we get super hyped and we're like jumping all over each other and other people that we don't know, like hugging people and like cheering, it's like, what is that? Then fangirling. And then they're like, oh shit, that's like real. So we all fangirl over different things. So it's all the same thing. Yeah, I got one more question. Go ahead. How'd you feel when Zuko got defeated in the last Airbender movie? What? The Airbender movie? Movie? Yeah. Are you talking about? There was a movie based on Avatar, it's called right. The Last Airbender. Okay. You, you haven't seen it? I ain't seen that movie. Oh my god, dude. I didn't see it, although, you know what, I do like Dev Patel as an actor. I think he's an uh, awesome dude, but I haven't seen the movie. You gotta see I do movie. feel like if he was gonna play Zuko, though, you gotta shave your head. For the first... Zuko's hair is important. Like, you gotta go from that horrible ponytail to the emo look. He did. You know? So, I mean, I don't know. I didn't see the movie, but we'll talk about it. That's why I, we'll talk about it when I see the movie. Thank you, man. Hey, what's going on? Yeah, what's going on? 
All right. I want to first. I'm going to comment on that movie for sure. for Zuko since you're the voice actor. Yes. They screwed him up big time. That's it. They, they just basically screwed up your character. So if you watch it, I'm not gonna watch the movie. You're not. Trust me, you're not. I mean, I'm trying not to watch it. Uh, the first question I want to ask is, uh, what's your personal favorite episode in the Avatar series? Um, probably, you know, I, I love the episode when, when Zuko goes on a date. That's like one of my favorite episodes. Just because you get to see, you know, so much of like, his aim, like, I must capture the Avatar like forever, right? Like, I gotta capture the Avatar. And then he like goes on a date and you see this whole other side of him. Which I thought was super cool. Alright, and the next question and is... And I always wonder what happened to that girl. Like, what happened to her? Gone. I mean, you know what I'm saying? It's like, she's gone. Like, come on. I thought he was doing his thing. Like, it was like, yo. Zuko had it rocking for a second there. By the end of the episode, he was like... It was a side piece. Okay. Yeah, it was. And the second one is the same question, but for the Jake Long series. The Jake Long series. I like... I like the whole... The whole like dark dragon thing, and that ironically, when he was going like having to battle the dark dragon, um, I was in my real life having to battle like a dark dragon in my life, and ironically, Jake Long was teaching me like lessons to like overcome my dark dragon. It's so weird, but it's true. And not only that, I also during that time was having like a secret relationship thing. Right. Like, you remember how, like, Rose and, and Jake had that, like, secret little, like, relationship? I was always loving those episodes. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I was also going through a secret relationship. <laughs> it was so weird. That's what I'm saying. Like, me and Jake Long were living parallel lives. It's weird. Yeah. Thanks a lot. All right, man. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. <laughs> um, that was weird. That was really loud. I'm so sorry. Um, I have a question and then I have a request. Go right ahead. Um, my first question is, are there any actors or voice actors that you'd like to collaborate with? Collaborate in which way? Um, like, work with them. Like, let's say for actors, like, would you like to work with, like, Robert Downey Jr.? Yes. Like <laughs> for sure. Uh, I mean, there's so many tons of great voice actors that I, I have worked with. Um, Kevin Michael Richardson, Mark Hamill, uh, you know. There's so many, to work with them again would be amazing. Um, and I do have some ideas of stuff that we want to do together. So hopefully we will get to. That was, that was really weird. It was kind of strange. Um, and what was the other part? Um, oh, it was just like actors and voice actors. But like, I had a request also. Give um, me the request. Your line gets really long over there. And I was wondering if we could take a selfie. Can we take a selfie? Yeah, we could take a selfie. Like right now? Or like How are we going to do that? I'm on. How are we going to do I can get on stage. <laughs> Come over here. We'll take a, I'll take a selfie too with everybody behind us. That'd be cool. Okay. Up on my Instagram. <laughs> um, yes, what's up? Oh, Hans, I, I wanted to ask about the influence that Rufio's had on uh, music. Like, have you heard the band Rufio? That yes. Was, and what, what's your what's your favorite song by Rufio? I don't know. I mean, I don't know the band that well. Um, but I heard about them one time they were performing in L.A. and I walked into like this In and Out Burger by where they were performing. And it was all Rufio fans, and people were like, "What?" And oh, it was weird. But um, as far as Rufio, I mean, I don't know the band that well, uh, but I hear they're an amazing rock band. So you never called them up, go on stage? I never did. Them. People told me that I should go to one of their shows because I like beginning a lot of their shows, they chant Rufio, and they're like, you should just go. And I just haven't had time, and they tour a lot outside of L.A. But also, just as far as Rufio's influence on like 
you know, music and like pop culture in general is like kind of weird. It's cool. It's like right, a weird. Like have, you, have you met Skrillex? Or... Yeah, I know Skrillex. Okay. Um, I knew him very young, Sonny, right? Mm -hmm. And so when he did this song, I ran into him at a Grammy party and he was like, just crazy, like, yo, did you hear the song? All this kind of stuff. I think for a certain generation, Rufio, this like punk rock, uh, you know, kid that dies in this movie is just representing a lot of this rebel, rock and roll rebel energy for a big generation. So I think it's kind of cool. Um, it's like one of those weird things, like, I don't know, it's just one of those iconic little characters that I just happen to play, but I, I'm a fan of it too. So when I go around and you meet some like random, especially rocker person, like, dude, you're Rufio. It's so weird. I really don't even know how it impacted certain things. Later on, you, you find out how important of a character was to a lot of people growing up. Yeah, like above me, like by Rufio is like one of the punk rock generations. Would you, would you do the chant? Yeah, Rufio you want to chant? You started, I'll join okay. in. Okay, well, I'll do the chant. Rufio! 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 Rufio. Oh! Awesome, man, thank you. Yeah, what's up, man? Oh, you Spider-Man is with... I'm gonna record this too. Okay. What is your favorite video game series, or just anything? My favorite video game? Yeah, just anything. Of all time? Sure. It's probably Mega Man. Yes! <laughs> okay, I'm really happy, thank you. Is that it? I like Mega Man. Which one? <laughs> yes! You're back, Katara, you're back. You're short also, but not in a bad way. You're young, that's how tall you're supposed to be. Someone understands, finally. <laughs> Thank you so much. So since you like Mega Man, how do you feel about him being a character in Super Smash Bros? And that's cool. I haven't got to play him yet, but I want to play him. It's I wonder if, it, if he has all the weapons. Does he have all the guns and stuff? Smash I know, it's not out yet. Character. What? I went to Smash Fest and I kind of almost won. Yeah, yeah. He, he played it. I, I need to play the game. Yes! Thank you. That was awesome. What's up? Buenas tardes, Senor Dante. <laughs> Hello. Hey, um, I'm a big fan of Hook. Could you yes. tell me uh, what it was like to work with Robin Williams and the Lost Boy crew? Uh, great, man. Robin Williams is uh, awesome. Very, very cool guy. He's everything you'd, you'd expect for him to be as far as just being out of his mind, kind of energetic. Uh, so he's, you know, he, he taught me a lot when we were shooting that film. Because he's like number one on the call sheet. When I say that, it's like when you get the call sheet every day, it's like, like the most important person on the movie. He's like number one, right? So that's Robin Williams. But he also taught me that when you're starring in a project that really the morale of the set is really based upon you because you're the star of the film. So he took it upon him to to really have the energy to keep this whole crew and set going for over, it was like we shot for a better part of eight months, that film. And uh, so I learned a lot from him that way. But at the same token, as much as he'd be like telling a lot of jokes and keeping everyone's energy up during shooting, we'd have moments when we were just in the, in the makeup trailer just talking about poetry. because. At that time in my life, uh, I was in high school. One of my favorite movies was uh, Dead Poet Society. Yeah, so, and I'm a, I'm a poet. He was in that one too, right? Yeah, and so we talked a lot about poetry, and um, I'm still a poet to this day, and a lot of that, just growing up and talking about poetry, how important poetry is, is to him. I ended up starting the biggest poetry venue in the country, um, in Los Angeles, about 18 years ago, which is still going today, so, you know, he's a big, big part of my life in that way. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, man. Hi. Hey, you. 